Welcome to part number three of Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec. This is the Moving Chicane, and today it's time for the World Compact Car Cup. Now, I hired a new driver, D. Maldonado, and his personality is really hot. And check out this quick compilation of him wrecking in his previous attempt at trying to win this championship. Oh, it's in the wall already. Lap one. What message was censored? Freaking Maldonado, come on! Again? Again, Maldonado in the wall? Oh! Lead championship leader in the wall! <laughs> he finished the job! Yes, Maldonado! Yes! Dude, please hit the wall again. Lay break! Yes! Oh my god, Maldonado, please. Maldonado, no! What did you do? Yeah. So that's what we dealt with the entire first attempt, and there was a Pojo 206 in there, as you saw, and it was way too OP. So we're going to have to buff up this Honda Civic somewhat. Let's do Turbo Stage 1. Yeah, that should be enough. GT5 is the best game for you, really? My favorite is 4. Okay, so back to B-Spec, back to the beginner series, back to the World Compact Car Race. And yeah, Maldonado finished 4th in the first race, 3rd in the second race. That 206 won both times and uh, made us ineligible to win the championship. No, 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 Flynn. Flynn is on vacation. Maldonado has to take over. Your favorite is 4, but I played every single game in the main series and then some. Tuning shop music with GT5 is the same music as you get for failing license tests in GT Sport. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I know 4 it is for most, but mine is 5, 2nd is 6. Really? That's interesting, because my least favorite is 5. My least second least favorite is 6. I prefer 5 over 4 because B-Spec was more fun. You could do a B-Spec race against your friends, drivers. I forgot about that. I never had any friends who liked B-Spec. That's the problem. Prologues are part of the main series, changed my mind. Eh, they... No, they're not really part of the change series. The main series. My list is 4, GT1, GT5. Yeah, my list is from favorite to least least favorite. It's 4, 3, 2, 1, 6, and 5. Anyways, green flag. Let's see here. How badly is Maldonado going to screw this race up? Well, he's certainly doing better than the last time we raced. Me and my friends had a system where we weren't playing. We raced our B-Specs to get money. That's smart. And see, I didn't have any, like I said, I didn't have any friends who liked B-Spec mode. So I couldn't experience that, unfortunately. Green flag means you're not, you're now allowed to crash into everyone. Yep. Everyone's cheering for Maldonado and taking pictures of him. See, he's doing much better now. Lupo's in the wall. Citrin's in the wall. That Citrin C4 might be the biggest competitor here. He says his mental strength is up there. Wrong. All right, Maldonado, first lap down and you're leading. Good job. Okay, this car might be a little bit too OP now. D. Maldonado is at the Gran Turismo Universe Senna. <laughs> GT5 Prologue was your first GT, GT News. Nice. I played GT4 as a friend's PS2, but my own was Prologue on my own PS3. Sweet. My first ever was number two. Christmas of 1999. 
Yeah, that Citroen is going to be the biggest competitor that Maldonado is going to face here. So, I want him to pick up the pace just a little bit. Where do you rank GT4 among the GT... Why did I just say that? Weird. Where do you rank GT Sport among the GTs? Uh, nowhere. Because GT Sport is a spin-off. Not, an, not a uh, main entry into the series in my opinion. So I don't really rank GT Sport anywhere. Although I do like GT Sport. I mean, not as much as like iRacing for example. In terms of online competition and like structure in general but it's still a good game it's still a solid sim in my opinion do we have any clue when gt7 is coming out then no idea no clue i mean i hear that polyphony is like finally outsourcing their 3d model to other companies which is good because maybe we won't have a bunch of standard cars in gt7 whenever that comes out Did those text? Did those textures just pop up? I like looked down and looked up, and it looked like they did. My opinion, GT Sport is not like an old GT game. The feeling is not the same. The music, the car is the big career. Yeah, standard. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, GT Sport is not a main a main entry into this series. My in my opinion, so I don't classify it anywhere among the six games. My wish list? Well, obviously every standard into premium. Every standard into premium mainly. Um, all the original tracks, SSR 11 back. Um, that's really it. I mean, I know this is like unrealistic, but maybe kind of like a Smash Brothers Ultimate kind of thing. Maybe have like all the, the tracks back. I know all the cars will probably be impossible. But all the tracks at least would be nice. I do miss Trial Mountain as well. GT6 could have every single premium car if they had time, but there wasn't enough space. I mean, they could have had every premium car had they outsourced their uh, 3D model work, in my opinion. You know, like, if they had done that, then they could have had every car premium. But most importantly, the PS3 was a garbage system to work with, first and foremost. So, yeah, I mean, developers had a really hard time developing games for this damn thing. Which, Polyphony said it themselves as well, like, PS4 is way easier to develop for than PS3 was. Bring back Costa de Amafi and the old SSR5. Yep, that was a really good track. I do like the Italian track more, Sitia de Ria? I, I forget how it's pronounced, but yeah, I like that track more. So yeah, now you know my opinion about my favorite GT game and what I think about GT Sport. <laughs> Alright. Garbage to work with, but you could squeeze a lot of graphic power. Yeah. I hate that GT came out when, GT, when PS4 did. Maybe barely play because I moved to PS4. Cynthia de Aria. They're both in... Real oh, that's right. They are both in Italy. Cita. Uh, Cita. Re. Sorry. I'm a yank. All right, well, Maldonado's learned a lot in his championship defeat, <laughs> so yeah, now he's maintaining the pace. And is he going to win?
Yeah, let's pressure him. Cheetah de... Cheetah de Aria. Got it. Well, Maldonado won. Level 6. What level is he now? You're going to sleep? Alright, man. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Appreciate it. Madrid Mini, which is round number 2. And for the love of God, Maldonado, please don't stuff it into the wall again. Um, game? The race just started and the screen's black. What the heck? I hate when that happens, man. Well, at least Maldonado's on it already. Yeah, I did not want him to stuff it into the turn one wall again. Oh, right when I say that, that's the first thing he does. Well, at least he has really good straight line speed. I jinxed it. I know. I jinxed it big time. <laughs> I done did it. Well, I guess if Maldonado can just maintain this pace now, then we'll be fine. At least he recovered a second. Am I a fan of F1? I am, but my favorite series is IndyCar racing. I'm a big, big, big Verizon IndyCar series fan. But yes, I am a fan of F1. Not as much as IndyCar, but like, not, not as much anymore of Formula 1, honestly. But, yeah, I mean, I still like the sport. KMH are better than MPH, changed my metric mind. Jesus Christ, Maldonado! What was that? Now the, the headlights look like squished pancakes. Because the damage model in this game is like, really dumb. Okay, so I'm a big F1 fan, but casual IndyCar. How's Alex Rossi doing? I know he won a few races, but what's the consensus of him in the IndyCar community? Well, the thing with Alexander Rossi is that a lot of people are like kind of hating on him because he's been really aggressive this whole season. But, I mean, in my opinion, IndyCar kind of needs that villain character. So Rossi's kind of like a good fit for that. Um, he's 40 points behind Scott Dixon, which 50 points is the amount for a race victory. Just have four more races to go, and... Anything could happen. Melvin now saw an IHOB and tried to go off track. Oh my god, please not again, Maldonado. No! I meant to s <laughs> Do you see Rossi as a future IndyCar champion or is it more than equipment good streak? I see him as a future champion for sure. Um he could win the championship this year. I mean, Scott Dixon is going to be really tough to beat, but he could win the championship. It's still pretty wide open. Maldonado wants to go on the drive through badly. You know, Abstract Sky told me that that whole turn one area is a walkway. That's actually a pedestrian walkway, so... Is there for stopping type talent in IndyCar the next big thing? I mean, really what's going on in IndyCar racing is more of an American movement. It's like, obviously we had American drivers because it's an American series, but around the 90s when a lot of like the Brazilians and a lot of the Europeans started coming over, a lot of the American talent really started to like go away, especially during the, like, the late champ car days. 
But now we've been having a little bit more of a resurgence with American talent, like your Joseph Newgarden, your Connor Daly's, your Graham Ray Halls, you know, your um, who else? Who else? Ryan Hunter Ray is kind of like that American driver that everybody kind of like looks up to, even though he's in his late thirties already. Indy 500 should have a car per lap change my tires. <laughs> oh, it's the Citroen that's leading. That's not really a surprise. I did mention that he's going to be Maldonado's biggest threat. That was a really wide entry into the final corner, but I guess that's fine. In, I feel like IndyCar on track product is better than F1, just that F1 has the global presence, big name. Well, yes. The reason why is because, I mean, IndyCar racing, no, it's it's cool, Mark. I, it's totally fine with me. Um, thing is, IndyCar could have challenged F1 in the 90s, but the whole civil war between the Champ Car Series and, you know, the Indy Racing League slash the Speedway, that really killed the momentum that American Open Wheel Racing had at the time. And that's what really caused the cert the rise of NASCAR in the US and you know like the downfall of American Open Wheel Racing as a global product. That's you know it, kart was really popular in the 90s especially you know here in the US it was even popular in some parts of Europe. You had freaking uh, Eurosport showing it you know like but yeah, I mean, that's all in the past. It's making a comeback, at least. Which, by the way, I might go to Sonoma, aka Infineon Raceway, for the finale. I might. Yeah, I remember hearing Champcore was making a ride to challenge F1 at Groupie in the 80s with politics sword apart. Yep. If you're not subscribed to this one YouTuber called Empty Box, go check out his channel. You'll be able to find a whole, like, history. He does, like, a whole series about the history of... of American Open Wheel Racing, it's really good. You should check him out if you have any, like, any kind of, like, um... Maldonado, please! At least finish second, Maldonado. Anyways, yeah, if you're interested in, like, the history of American Open Wheel Racing, and just, like, how it started, you know, not necessarily how it started, but, like, how the split happened, what it did to, you know, the downfall in general, like those kind of events, check him out. Empty box, he's really good. It's a Finian, not Sonoma. Nope, it's a, it's Sonoma, buddy. Actually, no, it's Sears Point. If you ask my dad, it's Sears Point. Cause hey, he he used to go in the eighties. Well, I guess second place is a decent finish for Maldonado. I mean, I will say I prefer how much IndyCar are going about the design of the cars, windscreen over Halo, and the new cars are gorgeous. Yes, they are, dude. Like, I was at Long Beach this year. Well, I'm at Long Beach every single year. But, yeah, dude, I love the design of the new cars so much. Okay, so myself and the Citroen are tied. Maldonado is now level 3. And the finale is at Capering Inside. Okay, they don't necessarily sound as loud as they used to back in the 90s, Mark, but they sound pretty good. They kind of sound like like the old school, like early 1980 F1 turbo cars. They're not that loud. They're not really loud that at all, but at least like they're loud enough so that way like you don't have to wear earplugs, but you know, there's they still kind of give you that feeling, you know, like like that adrenaline. But in, like, how good did it look in person it, and sound? Really good. Really, really good. All right, Maldonado. Can you win your first championship today? Let's find out. There you go. Get around all the back markers ASAP. Get away from the Citroen.
Well, we're tied for the championship, so... Yeah, I can't stress to you how loud the 911 RSR is. Oh, I mean, I've seen it in IMSA, in IMSA competition. It's a really good car. So the loudest car I've ever heard in person was the old school indie cars from the 90s. Like, my first year, get around all the moving chicanes. <laughs> yeah, they're all using my name. It's a good use. Anyway, so, yeah, dude. I, um, when, when I used to watch kart in the late 90s, early 2000s in Long Beach, those cars were so loud, dude, that earplugs was pretty much mandatory. Otherwise, you could literally blow your eardrums. So, Indy cars in the 90s used V8 turbos. Almost a thousand horsepower, like, low downforce. Those things were so badass, dude. My first time ever seeing a race car. Like, the first ever race car I've ever seen in my life. Oh, really? The last car you've ever heard was a 787B? Nice. I still need to go to, like... The Monterey reunion at WeatherTech Laguna Seca, but um, Laguna Seca. But anyways, um, yeah, dude, those cars were just so nuts. How did the Champ cars compare to the 911 and Corvette C7R? Louder, louder than those cars, dude. Those Champ cars were insane, dude, with noise. It's delightful. Yeah, I can only imagine, dude. See, the thing is that. The 911 RSR is louder than, than the Indy cars of today, but I'm but still it's not. I'm not saying that the Indy cars sound terrible. They still sound really good, and they still give you that kick, but not as much as they used to. All right, Citroen Championship contender is getting held up by the Lupo. Not anymore. Maldonado's doing really good right now. Like, he's doing a fantastic job. I wonder what the non-rocket car land speed record would be. Something curious to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, wouldn't, like, the Bugatti hold that? I, I don't know. I'm really ignorant when it comes to that like land speed records and stuff but those rocket cars that go out to like utah and like do 300 miles they're insane dude looks that hotness has no effect on him anymore yeah he's starting to cool down a lot more yeah he's actually doing really good how's wiccans been in indycar great dude wiccans is kicking ass dude like, it's not the question of whether or not he's going to win a race. The question is when. Like, dude, the man literally got pole position at St. Petersburg in the first race, dude. In his first attempt. And nobody has done that since Bourdais in 2003. But, yeah, dude, he led almost every lap. And so him and Rossi tangled in the final corner. Or, no, the first corner with, like, two laps to go. Which gave Bourdais the win. But, dude, Wiggins is going to win a race soon. The question is where and when. Yeah, dude, he, Wiccans did deserve to be an F1. Wiccans was an he's an absolute mega talent, bro. And I met him at Long Beach, dude. He's such a nice guy. Like him and his teammate Hinchcliffe, they're both super cool guys to hang out like not hang out with because I didn't hang out with them personally, but like to be around in the garage, they're super funny, dude. They're super cool and they're just super laid back. But yeah, um, Wiccans, honestly, has been really impressive on the ovals. Like, dude, Indianapolis, I mean, he wasn't really a factor in the race, but he still did a really solid job in terms of, you know, like a good result for your first race. The AI have a sensor that turns on and heats their temper up. <laughs> they probably do. That's probably how they program them. But anyways, um, yeah, the thing with Wiccans is that Indianapolis wasn't a good result good start to the you know his oval racing in general texas dude he was leading texas and so ed carpenter took him out iowa i thought iowa he would struggle at a lot but he did really good there 
And then Phoenix, obviously, his first ever oval race, he finished second. So I'm just like, dude, Wiggins is going to win a ra win a race one of these days. The question is, when? So, Maldonado only has one more lap to go after this final set of corners. And, yeah. He's doing really good. I can't race properly with the stream playing, so I'll do the championship later. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate you sticking around, Francisco. Final lap. Oh, look at Maldonado starting to cool down now. Who the, has the better engine right now between Chevy and Honda? Well, if you had asked this question maybe a few years ago, I would have said Chevrolet. But they've been both on par, honestly. Like, last year, Honda was better on the ovals. But now, I want to say Chevrolet's better on the ovals. But Honda's been really good elsewhere, dude. I mean, right now you have Honda 1-2 in the IndyCar standings. Joseph Newgarden's third in a Chevy. So, dude, they've been on point. Like, big time. No problem. Final lap of the deformed nuke track. It literally looks like the fat man. <laughs> hey, it does look like a deformed nuke. Well, Maldonado has redeemed himself after losing the championship and making careless mistakes in his first attempt. He comes back and wins the World Compact Car Race. Now the garage is going to catch on fire, like Abstract Sky said. Still level 6, which is fine. And let me go ahead and save this replay for a thumbnail. I love to see Alonzo in IndyCar. I think he's arguably the best driver in the world, either him or Hamilton and Vettel. Yeah, dude. I'm um, I'm just wondering, dude, is McLaren gonna come over? I wanna just I wanna see him so badly in the series, dude. And that's the thing, dude. I you know, according to the rumors right now, when <laughs> Nato's gonna play bumper cars with the garage walls. When McLaren's if McLaren does come, they wanna swoop up Scott Dixon. So that way they can have an experienced driver. But yeah, we have to win at World Comp... Uh, not World Compact. We have to win at uh, Madrid. Which, we're going to do that off screen. So it won't be a big deal. A112 Abarth. Alright. Auto Bianchi. Not bad. Oh, I know, dude. Scott Dixon and Alonzo would be such a nasty duo, dude. If that happens, dude, the whole field is in trouble. Like, I, I tell you what. If McLaren were to come next year and that were to happen, don't be shocked if McLaren doesn't win a single race in 2019. Because they have to obviously learn, you know, learn the series itself, how everything works. Even though they had the Indy 500 under their belt. Street course racing, road course racing, completely different. Texas, Phoenix, Iowa, oh no, not Phoenix anymore, but Iowa, those ovals, definitely will struggle big time. But, 2020, if they were in their second year at that time, they would be kicking a lot of ass. But here it is, Auto Bianchi A112 Abarth. So, next up on Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec, I don't know what race we're going to do. We'll find out. 